My talk today will be about the eye as an optical system. The human eye is like a camera. In a camera, you have a closed dark chamber with an aperture. Rays coming from an object will be affected by lenses, so they will pass through the aperture to hit a sensor here at the back of the camera. We have pigments in the UVL tract that ensures that we get a dark chamber. We have the pupil that acts like the aperture, allowing rays to get in, and it varies in size depending on the external illumination. Then we have this group of lenses. We have the cornea and the crystalline lens, and the sensitive layer is the retina. So rays coming from an object will be affected by these lenses to be focused on the retina. The cornea is a plus lens with a power of plus 42 diopters, while the lens, the crystalline lens, has a power of plus 18 diopters. The anthropocene diameter of the eye, the distance between the cornea and the retina, is 24 millimeters. The cornea has a radius of curvature of the anterior surface of 7.8, and its power varies between 40 to 45. This is a high power because we have a huge difference in the refractive index between the air and the cornea. So most of the refraction occurs on the anterior surface of the cornea. On the back surface, Minimal amount of, rec of refraction occurs because the difference between the refractive index of the cornea, which is 1.36, and that of the echoes, which is 1.33. So the difference here is quite small. While on the anterior surface, the difference between air and the cornea is quite big. If somebody opens his eye under the water, he will get image blurred because if you open your eyes directly in the water, you're going to open in a media of water which has a refractive index of 1.33. So the difference between 1.33 and 1.36 is small. So the power will be markedly dropped. On the other hand, if you use some goggles, keeping some air in front of the eye, then the image will be clear. If you open the eye in water directly, the corneal power will be zero because the anterior surface of the cornea gets a plus five, the back surface is a minus five, so the total power of the cornea is zero. While if you have some air, the anterior surface will be of a power of 48 plus, while the back surface has a power of minus five, so the net result will be 43. If we come to the crystalline lens, crystalline lens is not a homogeneous structure. It has a central part with a higher refractive index than the periphery, and also the central layers are more curved than the peripheral layers. In optics, if you have parallel plate of glasses, rays will come through and affected will continue the same path. On the other hand, if you make this glass with higher density in an area rather than the other one, then rays will be refracted toward this area. If you make the denser area in the center, then the rays will be focused to a point. If you change the shape of this plate of glass into a curved surface, then you have another factor, which is the curvature, that will help the increased refractive index to focus the rays more. This is the structure of the crystalline lens. It gets a curved, curved surface, and at the same time, it has a denser refractive index in the sensor. The crystalline lens is formed of continuous layers from periphery to the center, and as we go toward the center, the refractive index is higher, and the 
curvature is more. The crystalline lens is formed of a cortex and a nucleus. Anteriorly, we get the echoes, and posteriorly, we have the vitreous. Anterior surface of the lens has a radius of curvature, 10 millimeters, while the back surface is more curved with a radius of curvature, 6 millimeters. Aqueous has a refraction of refractive index of 1.33. Cortex has a refractive index of 1.38, while the nucleus has a refractive index of 1.41. On the back surface, the vitreous is like the equus 1.33. Nucleus of the lens has a power of plus 42, while the cortex get a power of minus 3 diopters in front, and on the layer behind is another minus 3. So, so the total power of the lens is plus 18. Now, What's an optical system? An optical system is a group of lenses together that will form the optical system. A lens, a single lens, has coordinate points. This is one lens, rays coming from one side will be focused on a point. We call this F2 or F posterior. This represents the surface of the lens. If it's a very thin lens, so it will be one layer. And this is the principal plane, where rays will change the direction. If rays coming from the other side, the back surface of the lens, affecting this principal plane, then the rays will come to a focus here, and we call this F1 or F anterior. So. So rays coming from the left side, usually you put the object on the left side, will pass through the lens to focus on F2. On the other hand, if rays coming from the back surface, it will focus here on F1. We call this the image space focus. So this is the image space focus, and we call this the object space. So this is the object space focus. We call this distance second focal length, and we call this one first focal length. So parallel rays coming from the left side will be focused here on F2 or image focus, image space focus. On the other hand, coming, rays coming from the right side will focus here on F1, or what we call object space focus. If you put an object here, then rays will come out the opposite way, will come out parallel. What is the optical center? If rays pass through an optical center, it will continue on the same path. Being somewhat thick lens, there will be just shift of the rays, but the emerging ray is parallel to the original one. If this is a very thin lens, then it will be a continuous line. So this is the optical center or the nodal point of the lens. The optical center can be in the center if it's a symmetrical biconvex lens. But if it's a meniscus, then the optical center will be located outside the lens. In case of a thick lens, rays coming into the lens will be deviated and come out again deviated, passing through F2 of the lens. So if we extend this ray, and this ray, we can put here the principal plane. We can remove this thick lens and put another thin lens here to do this same job. Image formed by a lens. We can start by having a ray parallel to the principal axis. Then it will come through F here, or passing through F1 will come out parallel, so the image will be formed here. A third ray can pass through the nodal point, and it will come unaffected again to the same location. 
Now, an optical system is formed of multiple lenses. If this is the object, rays coming from the object should come out here, passing through F2. If another ray passing through F1, it should come here parallel. So if we extend this one, we can put here one plane and here another plane. So we can remove all these multiple lenses and put in place a very thick lens. This is one surface of the lens and this is the second surface of the lens. We call this the first principal plane and we call this the second principal plane. And this is F1 and this is F2. If we have a ray getting into the nodal point being a thick lens, we have two nodal points or principal focuses, N1 and N2. The ray coming out is parallel to the original one, so it's a continuous pathway. So in any optical system, we have two focal points, two principal planes, and two nodal points. Once we know all these systems, all these points, we can draw any image. One, we can draw any image when seeing an object. So this is a multiple system, plus, minus, minus, plus, plus, whatever. Rays getting into this system will be focused in F2. Rays coming from the other side will be focused in F1. And this is the principal planes of that system. So this is a thick lens. This is the principal plane. This is the nodal points. In case of a thin lens, we have surfaces of the lens and just one nodal point. Now, if I apply this to the eye. This is the first example, what we call the schematic eye. The schematic eye has an anterior focal point and a posterior focal point. And these are the two principal planes. It is behind the cornea in the anterior chamber. And we have two nodal points one in front of the back surface of the lens and the other one is behind the back surface of the lens. So parallel rays from an object very far will be focused here on F2. If parallel rays come from behind, they will come focus here on F1. Now F1 is anterior to the cornea with a distance of 15.6. While the distance from the anterior surface of the cornea to F2 is 24.3. The principal planes, the first one is behind the cornea by 1.4, and the second one is behind the cornea by 1.7 millimeters. For the nodal point from the anterior surface of the cornea, N1 is 7.1, N2 is 7.3. N2 is away from the core, from the retina by 17 millimeters. We have another eye, we call it dunder-reduced eye, where the cornea is one spherical surface with a radius of curvature of 5 millimeters and has a power of 85.6. There is no lens, it's one homogeneous surface. The media inside this homogeneous media has a refractive index of 1.3. F1 in the Donder's eye is 17 millimeters from the cornea, while F2 is 22.6 millimeters. The principal plane, we have only one principal plane, 1.35 behind the cornea, and the nodal point is 5 millimeters back from the anterior corneal surface. 
and from nodal point to the retina is 17 millimeters. So we have two eyes. The first eye, we call it the schematic eye, and these are the parameters of the schematic eye. And the second is the donors reduced eye, and these are the parameters, of the, the, and these are the cardinal points of each of them.